This is the exact location 20 years ago, 20, 21 years ago, where we was filming Star Wars. And um, these bleachers are basically, you know, here, but a little different. The floor, the surface of the basketball court was different because it was a sky blue. And right there in the middle is where I started demonstrating certain ancient moves. A dead freeze like oh, this. Well, that's one of the old, old, ancient. It ain't one of the old, because that, <laughs> that was the first one to do it. How ancient can you get? Right to left, left to right, left to right. That was the shuffle. And this, as everybody knows, is when you have a headache. We filmed Star Wars like 6 in the morning. Most of us was grumpy, including myself, because in one of the scenes, where we were just joking around, you know, Crazy Legs Cousin, you know, had this famous line that everybody still talks about today, like, It started in Freeze's house. Oh, shut up! His mom takes the break. She's a whole act in here. Nah, don't be talking about my mother now. So it didn't originate in your mother's kitchen? Nah, that was just, that was just a joke line, but, you know, whenever people talk about Star Wars, that's one of the first things they bring up. Well, you act as stupid now. I have to, you know, give a lot of credit and thanks to Take One. He brought us to Henry Studio, Common Ground. There was eight of us. We split the, we split the squad into two, because we was explaining to them what a battle was all about. So I took one half of the crew, and Lex had the other half. And, you know, we, we demonstrated to Henry what we could do. And according to Henry, Henry was in shock. Henry, Henry was very stunned. So, you know, Take is mainly responsible for that whole thing happening for us performing downtown. After Star Wars, um, we started doing show. We started doing shows like downtown and like the East Village clubs, Dance Interior, and the Grill, the Peppermint Lounge, the Mud Club. We did the Lincoln Center battle, which Henry was, you know, mostly responsible for. We did, you know, stuff at the Ritz along with Africa Bambada, and that's how we got put down with the Zulu Nation. The scene didn't really pick up and started, you know, spreading worldwide to like. 84 after like people was watching a Buffalo Girls video which we were featured in with Malcolm McLaren and when people started seeing Beach Street. One time there was a there was like a festival around my area and I just went down and people laughed at me you know because I wasn't any good to like about two or three months I started practicing and I started making up a whole lot of freezes. Competition is tradition you know because that's how most of this whole scene came about. You know, it's just like you trying to outdo me and I'm trying to outdo you. If we can't defeat each other, team up. A b-boy has to have his own identity, first of all. Especially the name is very important, who you go by. Like Crazy Legs name, everybody know, that's world famous and he lived up to that name. It took Ken Swift a while to have an identity behind his name because he went through name changes from Kid Zoom to Ken Rock to Ken Ski to Ken Swift. Once he got that name Ken Swift, it all fell in place for him. People called me Frosty because of my last name. I just added the Y, but the freeze I'm more known to because of, because of the freezes that I started making up really in 78. Like, I would never say it would exaggerate like I'm a man of a thousand freezes, but anything I did at the time would be in a different freeze. The craziest move I ever came up with and everybody knows what that is. It's called, we call, I call it the backbreaker, but it was known in the movie Flashdance as a suicide. That's, that's a real power move where if I did that on my opponent, what would he do? It's, it just throws you in a different direction. It just, it just confuses you. I, I'm, I'm a good instigator. I might go down like that, tie my shoe. That's just a mini freeze. Tie my shoe, get up, and then bring them out like this and be like, next. So take your moves back to the rehab or, you know, try, try again. 1985, the breaking scene was like fading away and I was struggling. One year I didn't even know what a $20 bill looked like. But 
I think the jam on the groove play, which happened, I think, in 94 to 96, I think that started it, that uplifted it again. And then the Rock Steady anniversary, more b-boys started coming to an event. 1997, I had a setback, you know, my health, I wasn't doing too good. I ended up being hospitalized. You know, I had pneumonia and I lost a lot of weight. And then again, I kind of lost my will. My b-boy future, I think it's like, it's up in the air. Sometimes I look at myself as a limited b-boy, which, you know, if I was in better shape, but you know, 20 years later, we're in our 30s and we're still doing this. We're not physically in shape or advanced like some of these other b-boys, but we know how to perform. I'll be remembered as a b-boy, but I'ma live and die as a human, you know?